Let me know when you're ready. Okay. All right. So Kevin Lynch in his image of the city, he talks about nodes and pathways, you know, how people can recognize where they are. Um, this is a node uh, to get us into the pathway of Blueback Square. Uh, behind us is the statue of Noah Webster. That's also a node. Notice we can see from one node to the next. So we know that that's the entranceway, the pedestrian entranceway into Blueback Square. We're going to walk into Blueback Square and I want you to really feel what's happening. Before we even look at anything, notice that we are walking down into Blueback Square, right? And as we walk down into Blueback Square, what's happening? What's that? Changing. What's changing? Architecture. Well, the architecture is changing, sure. You notice, we're walking down into what feels like, well, a city. Yes, Zeal, a city. We walk down here, we've gone from um, the wide roads up in West Hartford Center to very narrow roads, so it feels like an old city, no? And not only narrow roads, but our buildings have gotten, well, noticeably higher. We're looking at, you know, six stories now instead of the three or four that are over in... Laura's laughing, yeah? It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But let's look at these buildings right here. Um, people do live in these buildings. We have the storefronts down below. These are condominiums. Wealthy people live in there. Um, but what do you notice? What, what style of architecture is this? Where might we see uh, this type of uh, building? A uh, town or city? city? City. What kind of a city? Uh, American city or European city? European. European city. So we have this, in, there again we have the kind of um, faux mansard roof, right? Instead of the real slates, it's uh, just the architectural shingles. Yeah. So we get our mansard roof, we have our balconies. This is something that you might see in Amsterdam, no? Or maybe in certain parts of Paris, or parts of Berlin that haven't been rebuilt. So yeah, it's very European. And you've got to ask yourself, why is that? I'm in the middle of West Hartford Center. Actually, I'm in Blueback Square, which is a shopping center. This is an outside mall. But yet, we already have this feeling that we're inside of a of a city, and, it, and it's a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, intimate, right, setting. The streets are narrow, uh, the, the walkways are, are paved with paving stones, yeah, let's move on. Now, remember this, it's not enough, I had a student that said, well, um, West Hartford uh, Blueback Square, it's, uh, the myth is um, it's trying to sell you something. No, 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 that's not the myth. That's the first order signification, right? This is Crate and Barrel. Crate and Barrel is trying to sell you something. There is no myth there. That is just what it does, right? However, over here, yes, I am being sold something, but I'm not being, I'm being sold a myth. I'm being sold a narrative that has nothing to do with buying and selling. The architecture is telling me another story. And I want to suggest that there are several different narratives going on here. So you might think that they're all kind of discombobulated. But I assure you, they all work together. So we saw up in the top, we saw a kind of Americana, right? Very nostalgic 1940s, 1950s cinema that no longer exists. Over here we have Amsterdam brought to us. And this, this center was finished, well, not more than five or six years ago. So it's all very new. Street lamps. Oh, yeah. Uh, what time period are we looking at with these street lamps? Right here. Straight down. Um, modern? No. 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 When? Uh, 40s, 50s. Yeah. 40s, 50s. Eric says older, older Victorian. Yeah. yeah. Um, over here we have the uh, Criterion Cinema sign. Is this a modern sign? No. Where do we see the sign? What, what, what time period? It's got the light bulbs in it. When's the last time you've seen a, a cinema sign with light bulbs in it? It's probably before your time, right? 20s, 30s. So once again, we have this, let's move down here. The last place that I'll bring you.
This is my favorite. This is, if you had um, a Greek Acropolis and a Parisian cafe got together and had a child, <laughs> it would be this um, area up here. Here we have it. I would ask you, um, everyone, to gather around. Um, time period? Era? What are we looking at here, right in front of us? What do you think? What's that? Cradle democracy? Pre. Pre? Pre cradle democracy? <laughs> yeah. So something that's very Grecian, and yet I don't know what the, the, the pergola on top is <laughs> suggesting. <laughs> yeah, very Greek, right? And yet we also have, notice we have the kind of a uh, little cafe area, eatery. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a mix of this kind of Greek and French, you know, uh, style. Yeah, come with me. This is a kind of portion. Oh, and that, this is very, um, it's very medieval. Yeah, there are benches here. I mean, you would, you would see this, this is, you know, almost portion Celtic. Style. What? Yeah. It's kind of Persian stuff. Persian. Persian. Celtic mm -hmm. Persian, yeah. <laughs> remember, remember too that Raymond Williams in his essay on architecture and visual culture, you don't need to be a student of architecture to read architecture as a sign. You just need to know that it's saying something. Something that maybe you're unfamiliar with and you have to, as Bart said, come up with new words to describe it. This is Blueback Square. Blueback Square is named after the elementary spelling book um, that was put out by Noah Webster uh, back in the 19th century, the Blueback Reader. Do you find it odd that Blueback Square is named after a grammar book? Yeah, it's very strange, isn't it? There's a connection going on here. We have, we have um, European archi style architecture. We have a kind of throwback, right? to a nostalgic America with our cinema up above. Um, we have our Greek, um, I don't know what, um, over there, our Parisian cafe. And then we have quotes from Mark Twain on the wall. Um, so we have a lot going on. You have a lot to think about. A lot of myth, right? And you have to ask yourself, well, I've pointed out a few. I mean, there are, if you walk around here, there, there are a lot of different myths going on. What I would suggest that you need to do is come up with a, a kind of cohesive whole, right? And, you know, an argument, a perspective, right? An ordering narrative, dare I say, and I try to stay away from it, a thesis. Right? But you need to come up with what you think the square is doing as a whole, what myth it's presenting to us, and then here's where you're going to bring in specific examples, and then you're going to want to talk about the motivation of the myth. I mean, if the square, it's a shopping area, yes, okay? So you don't want to write about shopping and buying and selling because that's just first, first order signification, right? We know that's happening. We want to talk about that second order. And we want to talk about who's benefiting? Who benefits from this myth? Who's affected by this myth? So you need to come up with the motivation. Um, and that's your project. Thank you.